Hello everybody and welcome to Hemipedia.com. My name is Chris. I created Hemipedia. And this is just a brief tutorial on how to use the website. I'm not really going to go too in depth here. Uh, it's just something for uh, beginners to use. I will have other tutorials later on how to edit everything. But for now we're just going to get straight into the basics. Alright, so first you're obviously going to type in Hemipedia into your web browser. Hit enter. And you're going to see this, login required. Uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, you're going to uh, have a login. Uh, I don't believe that the email system is working right now, but when that is up and running, you'll be able to request an account here, up in the corner. All right, but because that request account isn't working right now, we're just going to log in. Um, right now, in the meantime, if you want to create an account, you can either email me at chrisl0078 at gmail.com or c-l-o-c-k-e at hammondpedia.com, which I'll be checking every now and then. Um, but again, that's just for right now. Uh, in the meantime, uh, or I should say in the future, you will be able to use your own email and create an account dynamically. Uh, I won't have anything to do with it. However, right now I have to manually do it. That being said, let's log in. So I'm going to put in my username, which is admin. And I'm going to put in my password, which I won't tell you guys right now, but I will pass on eventually. And I'm going to stay logged in. So the reason why, um, oh, okay. I'm already logged in to an account, so I don't have to worry about this. And we'll just go back to the main page. This is what you'll actually go to once you log in. Um, but the reason why there's a login right now is because one of the things you'll notice is that a decent portion of the archives are actually uploaded up here. So if we go over here and we go to Files, uh, I'll just show you guys what I mean. File List up here you can see that I have all of these files uploaded. Now I want to come back to this later, but these are uh, all files from the archives that have already been digitized. Um, there's about 1,200 of them uh, in the Google Drive as of April 2nd, 2023. Uh, I have gone through each and every single one. Um, well, not each and every single one. I've done about 650. If you'll look right here, you'll see that they have a date, uh, they have some links in here, and that they're all transcribed. Um, that was a process that took me, uh, to be honest, two months at least, if not longer, to go through all of these, and I'm still only about halfway through. Uh, my goal is to finish it before the end of 2023, and I think that's a very reasonable goal. Um, but again, uh, that's why the login uh, is required, because I don't want people and I, not just me, but the archives and the management as well, doesn't want people to have access to those right now. So for the time being, uh, we do have that login. But anyways, once you are logged in, you'll notice a bunch of things. This is the main page. This will be updated in the future with a featured section over here and uh, some fun Hammond facts and then on this day thing, kind of like regular Wikipedia. In fact, you might notice that this looks a lot like Wikipedia uh, that's the goal, it's to make it as easy for newcomers to use uh, as anybody else. Uh, it actually uses MediaWiki, I don't know if you can see it right down here in the corner, uh, which is the same exact thing that uh, Wikipedia uses. Uh, however, it also uses Semantic MediaWiki, which isn't really important. Uh, when I get into the tutorials on how to make pages, that's when that will become more important. But uh, I'll just let you guys know it's a really useful uh, program This is actually Something that a lot of museums have been using recently. One of the uh, most notable ones is the Poison Book Project, which uh, talks about copper arsenic or copper-based arsenic in green uh, in green books in many libraries. Uh, those books specifically being made between uh, 1850 and 1870. Uh, they use the same sort of media wiki Wikipedia style page uh, that's just one of them a lot of museums over in California do it it's kind of an emerging uh, database of sorts uh, and I'm hoping that this will help us enter into that sphere 
So with that aside, uh, back to the actual contents of the page. This is uh, Hemipedia. This is what you will see once you've logged in. Uh, in list, there's some featured pages. There's a welcome page, some external links. Uh, these links right now go to our web page at Hammond Castle, which is a Squarespace site. Uh, Dunman's record project, uh, our Discogs account, uh, the Natalie Hammond account, and also the Digital Commonwealth, which actually has an abundance of uh, historic New England stuff, a lot of their cotton papers, uh, the Red Roof uh, guest books are on there, and I believe some of Beauport stuff as well. Uh, so if you're looking to do stuff about E. Pied Andrew, or Dabsville uh, in general, that's probably a link that you would be interested in. This, uh, this little section here will eventually have its own page, uh, but for right now, I'm just giving it this. Uh, wiki development, not too important for anybody that's just a casual user like you who is probably watching this. Uh, this is just so that way people in the future can figure out how to make pages. Uh, they're not up to date. This is a bit of an old one that I did when I first made the site. Uh, so we're not going to get into that right now. What we are going to do is go to John Hayes Hammond Jr. And this is his page. So just like Wikipedia, you have this little info box. That's what this is called over here on the right. Uh, it has his name, a portrait of him. This is the one actually from uh, Wikipedia. We have his birth date here and his birth place. You'll notice this little one right here. If you click on it, it will take you to San Francisco. That's where he was born. Oh, a little bit of lag. Oh, so I have his uh, death uh, date, and that is uh, right next to it. You see that he's aged 76. That's done automatically uh, whenever you create something new. It will automatically have how old they are when he died. Here we have the location of death, uh, the burial place where they're buried, obviously, and then their grave ID. This is really interesting. Uh, a lot of these people have find a grave uh, which is a database for all sorts of uh, grave locations. And a lot of them have IDs. So when you click on this grave ID right here, it will take you to John Hammond's uh, page. And you can see right here, obviously, that's in front of the cat garden. Uh, his occupation, or his, sorry, his other names, Jack or Jackie, those are referred to in many documents. Uh, that section is kind of reserved for how they might be referenced. For example, Isabella Stewart Garner, her other names would be Y. Uh, because that's what Dabsville and Hammond and uh, Apai and Andrew Bash it's slash Dabsville uh, referred to her as Y. So that would be uh, under the other names. Occupation, obviously an inventor. Title, uh, not everybody's going to have one. Uh, Hammond's is obviously the father of radio control. The next one, relationship to Hammond Jr. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's him, obviously. It's himself. That's Hammond. Uh, if say we were doing Hammond Senior, relationship to Hammond Jr. would be father. Spouse, uh, Irene Fenton Hammond, you'll notice that her link is uh, red right now. That will change in the future. That just means that she doesn't have a page yet. Uh, that will quite obviously be done at some point in the near future. Uh, and then signature. Uh, this is just pretty cool. You'll be able to identify uh, who wrote a document through their signature, uh, if you can read it, of course. Uh, that's just a useful thing to know. Uh, getting back to the regular page, or to the rest of the page rather, uh, we have John Hayes Hammond Jr. as the namesake of the Hammond Castle Museum. is also referred to as the father of radio control. This talks a little bit about him. And then we have his life over here broken up into several different areas. So his early life, his education, career, etc. You'll also see uh, a C also here. And this has a really interesting uh, couple of pages. The old two blue ones right here are uh, documents written to Hammond and documents written by Hammond. So if we click on this, we'll see that it brings us to this page. It says documents written by Hammond. And here it says page has date and to person. Uh, this is a really, really cool feature of Hammondpedia. And I think that's something that uh, future archivists and anybody who's really interested in Hammond in general will get a lot of use out of. Um, here, this is a sortable table, so you can sort by the date that uh, Hammond wrote this, or to the person. So for example, let's see the earliest thing that I have uploaded so far. Uh, this one's blank, doesn't have a uh, date or name, 
here. The first one is document correspondence J H H J R to his boaster Stuart Garner, March thirtieth, nineteen fifteen. Uh, here it says date thirty March nineteen fifteen, and two person Garner. That's his boaster Stuart Garner. Uh, and then the further we go down, the more we get it. However, we can also do the opposite by clicking it again. We see that the latest correspondence uploaded so far is on the uh, 25th of August in 1961. Next to it, if we go to two person, we can sort by people. So here we have Princess Evangeline Salstam Seleski, uh, who we're going to go to next. And we can see all of the documents written to her. So clicking on her, uh, I should mention, by the way, while this is loading, uh, that every section does have that. In fact, let's look right here. Documents written to Zaleski, or written by Zaleski. There's the entire list right here. And it says who it's from. Uh, again, it's a sortable table, so you can sort of by date to the person. Uh, documents written to Zaleski is the same thing. And this one's pretty interesting. Documents mentioning Zaleski uh, say that, uh, like, look, let's look here. Uh, Alexis Zaleski wrote to, I assume, Hammond. I'm not going to look at it right now, but I'm going to assume it's to Hammond. Uh, and mentioned uh, Evangeline at some point. So she's mentioned in this. So you can see, you know, uh, how people connect to each other. Uh, this one was, let's see, written by Phyllis B. Knox. Uh, I believe that is the secretary for the Zaleskis, and Evangeline's mentioned in it. Uh, it's a pretty useful thing, uh, a pretty useful tool that I hope that at some point will get a lot more uh, love in the future, uh, especially as I go through all of the documents that we have digitized and even further beyond, because I know that you know the 1200 or so is a fraction, I think, uh, during the capstone this year. Uh, we found out that it was like 1% of our collection. Uh, I hope that with more documents, more and more of this gets uploaded. Uh, and more useful we'll get out of it. Uh, Personal Life talks a little bit about Evangeline. Uh, you kind of get the point here. Uh, gallery is uh, a picture of Evangeline that's actually a painting. Um, notes. Okay, this is really cool. Uh, if you go here, you will see uh, which earned her a decoration by President Woodrow Wilson. And then you'll have this little one right here. If you click on that one, it says, oh, her uh, Chicago Times obituary. So that's the source for this. This claim is the Chicago Times obituary. And because it's a link, we can click on it. And you'll see Evangeline Johnson Merrill. That was her later name after she remarried, uh, after Stokowski and after uh, Salsam Zaleski, Alexis. Uh, we see her, sorry for all these ads, uh, we can see her obituary. So this connects to a source, and that's a, a huge, huge reason as to why this site was created, because I've noticed that there's a lot of rumors uh, surrounding Hammond that are kind of unverifiable, and I want to get the facts down as close as we can. And by providing sources like this, I hope that that will do its small part to help dispel any Hammond myths. Uh, one of the myths that we always hear around here that I think is pretty funny is that Hammond tried to resurrect his father uh, in the basement of the museum, which is funny because if we're seeing this, you work here and you realize that we don't have a basement. Um, uh, I can actually track where that myth came from in the uploaded files. Uh, they talk about, uh, specifically Alexis and Hammond, talk about how uh, the Soviets are performing an experiment on a dog uh, to try and resurrect it, and I believe, uh, if you can give me a minute to go find that, uh, the exact Wikipedia page link where it talks about that. All right, and here we are. Uh, if you see over here, uh, here's the document name. This is actually the same name that is on the drive, so it's fairly easy to find any source because I don't change the names. Uh, if you look at this document, uh, here they're talking about the Soviet Medical Association uh, dog's head living comfortably. And if you go down a little bit further, it says it might be a good way to save grandpa and get his advice, having a sort of hall of fame of the family still living and to be called upon for information, please. So you kind of get what I mean. Like we can track down the source. Uh, this is pretty clear. 
Uh, this is the document where that rumor started. Uh, maybe somebody said, oh, hey, that actually happened, uh, or what have you. But now we can dispel that one because we know, hey, it's just in this one document. Uh, the only other major thing that you need to know about Hammondpedia is how to search things. So let's say that we want to find something about Muriel McDonald, who is uh, an estranged employee of Hammond's. So we're going to type in Muriel McDonald. And we get to her page. So pretty easy, just like how you'd search anything. Um, let's go back to that and Soviet dog example. I'll show you how to find it. So we know that uh, we need to find something regarding a dog. So let's just type in dog. And you're gonna see that there's no results. So if you unclick main and click um, everything over here, you can see there's uh, page title matches and page text match. Uh, we know that the it, it's the same link, but we know that the page text involves a dog because I transcribed it. So if you click on that, you'll find it. Uh, and you can kind of do this with everything. Uh, let's say, uh, I, I think another one that I have uploaded has something to do with the dynamic multiplier. So we'll type in dynamic multiplier to the search bar. Go to everything. And here we go. Uh, from Albert Trenner regarding the dynamic multiplier. And that kind of just sums up everything uh, about Hammond Castle. If you're a casual user, this is what you're going to uh, want to look for. Again, I will have tutorials on how to make your own articles later in the future, so that way when I'm not working here anymore, or uh, you know, if years down the line, if you want to create your own page, you can. Uh, but that wraps up everything. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me either at chrisl0078 at gmail.com or at c-l-o-c-k-e at hammondpedia.com. And thank you guys again for watching.